Hi guys, welcome back to the Tech Chat. This is the Asus ROG Spatha. It's a premium gaming mouse. It's 12 customizable buttons, a premium magnesium alloy chassis, 8,200 DPI sensor, RGB lighting, and some clever software that allows you to set it up exactly the way you want it. The Spatha is pretty much the ultimate gaming mouse, but it won't be for everyone. So is it worth buying? Let's find out. The Spatha comes really well packaged. You do definitely get the impression that this is a premium bit of kit. In the box, you've got the mouse, obviously, uh, and the usual sticky labels, manuals, and a hard carrying case, which has this magnetic dock, which you can either use vertically with a little stand here or horizontally on your desk. I think it looks quite nice. It's a great way of sort of just holding the mouse, it charges it as well, if you do use the mouse wirelessly, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, and generally, it's just a nice way of displaying what is quite a fancy and also quite expensive mouse. The mouse itself looks and feels pretty damn big, weighing in at almost 180 grams, but not necessarily in a bad way, more of a reassuringly badass kind of way. If you consider yourself a bit of an armchair general when you play games, this mouse definitely adds to that feeling. The main left and right mouse buttons are actually independent of each other and the mouse body itself, and they use OM-RON switches, if I can say that right, uh, which apparently increases durability and uh, offers better tactile feedback. Uh, compared to my Razer Death Adder, which actually is the mouse I usually use. Uh, clicking the left and right, right mouse buttons on the uh, Spatha feels much better and much more responsive. You wouldn't think so by looking at it, but the Spatha is actually pretty comfortable to hold. Although one thing that does bother me is at the back of the magnesium alloy body, the uh, body itself cuts away quite sharply. It's not gonna cut you or anything, but it just, I find it dug into my palm, my lower palm a little bit when I held it. Now that's not really the case for everyone because everyone's got different sized hands and uh, different grips, but I found that just a little bit irritating. The bigger issue for me though is the button placements. As you can see, there are a ton of buttons, about two billion I think, if I counted them correctly. But speaking of the buttons on the side, there are six, as I say, which brings the grand total of customizable buttons on this mouse to 12 which is ridiculous but kind of awesome if you are into MMOs and MOBAs and games where you want to have macros and pre-programmed uh, mouse buttons and all that so the flexibility is there and that would be crucial for a lot of people but not everyone. Uh, but the issue though is the size and the shape of the buttons. They're kind of small and a bit difficult to differentiate with your thumb uh, as you move them around. It, you're going to get used to it obviously if you do play it a lot but if you're playing a fast-paced game or if you're playing uh, you know, Dota 2 or an MMO, I don't really play MMOs, I think the last one was like Star Wars Galaxies or something, but I can imagine if you want to do something in a rush and you're trying to feel, you make sure that you know, you're going to press the right button, you're going to uh, use the right power or spell or weapon, you're probably going to take a little while to get used to it. It is worth mentioning though that this pretty big mouse has no size or weight adjustment and there's no left-handed version either, so if you do have small hands or you are left-handed, this probably isn't the ideal mouse. Probably the standout feature of the ASUS ROG Spatha is the fact that you can use it wired or wirelessly. So if you're playing twitchy first-person shooter games, you'll want the most responsive wired option, whereas the wireless mode gives you more flexibility to use it away from your desk. Battery life is awesome. I've been using it for about two days straight uh, wirelessly and it's still got about a third of its charge left. Although you can uh, extend the battery a little bit if you go into the Asus ROG Armory software, which we'll talk about in just a second, uh, and you change the lighting so it's uh, battery saver mode. And there are a few other power saving options you can tinker with in the settings to get a few extra hours out of it. The 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connection was stable throughout. I didn't have any dropout issues or any latency uh, issues whatsoever. It was pretty impressive. Uh, but of course, the most important feature of this mouse and the most useful one to gamers will be, of course, its programmable buttons. You need to download the ASUS Armory software. I put a link in the description below this video in order to customize the Spatha. As well as customizing all the buttons and what they do, you can change the mouse's DPI, acceleration speed, polling rate, and button response, and much more. If you've got any mouse tracking issues, if you're using it on different surfaces, there's a little option there where you can calibrate it, which is quite nice if you're changing the surface. There's also a tab in the Armory software dedicated to recording macros, uh, which you can then assign to mouse buttons, handy for those MMO and MOBA games. And of course, as with anything these days, you can change all the lighting. You've got a full RGB color wheel at your disposal, and you can light each of the three individual areas of the mouse. And it's not just the color you can change. There are six different lighting presets, including static, breathing, color cycling, trigger, random, and battery saving. Although I'm just a man of simple tastes and I quite like the default red static uh, color scheme myself, but you can customize it. 
Overall, I really do like the Asus ROG Spatha mouse. It looks great, it's got premium build quality and great materials, it's pretty comfortable to use, and it is infinitely customizable. Although, most of us probably don't need 12 macro buttons on their mouse, so this could be a bit overkill, especially considering the pretty hefty £150 or $160 price tag. Still though, if you are a big fan of MMOs and MOBA games, or you really just like the style of the Spatha, or you just really do want a load of macro buttons you can change, uh, that's probably a good choice. Personally though, I'll be sticking with my Razer Death Adder. It's just simpler. I don't really need these for my own personal you know, life. I don't play those sort of games that often, so it's not really uh, gonna appeal to me, uh, These all these extra buttons and all these uh, customizable options, but if you want the ultimate mouse, this is pretty close to it. Uh, if you are interested in buying the Spatha, you can find links in the description below this video. Let me know what you think of it, whether you'd shell out 150 quid for a mouse, uh, or whether you think it's a bit overkill. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching guys, please do like, share and subscribe if you enjoy my videos and I'll see you again next time.